Would you be surprised when you realize that all of the models you see in the scene right now are AI generated? This video is sponsored by Meshi AI and today we'll be testing out its limits to see if it can be used to create a full 3D scene using Unreal Engine 5 and Blender. But what does that mean for 3D artists like you and I? Let's find out. Before we start the video, I think it's important to address my intentions when discussing AI tools. In my last video on Rodin AI, I noticed a lot of heated discussions questioning my integrity as an artist, with some of them even shaming me for promoting these kinds of tools. What I've observed is that when it comes to AI, people tend to have polarizing perspectives. Some stay in denial, avoiding the conversation altogether, believing that their work can never be replaced. Others panic due to the rapid changes and argue that AI should be stopped in its tracks fearing it will replace everything and everyone. Now, I'm not here to challenge either perspective and honestly, I don't know what the future holds. And from my own experiences, and I'll admit that it's not a lot, I feel that the only way to move positively forward with these changes is to find a balance between these two extremes. I believe that the key is to accept the changes, learn all we can and spread that knowledge. And as a result, more discussions will sprout from this and together we can figure out where exactly AI should stand, how we can incorporate it and what limitations we we might need to start imposing. Regardless of how we feel about it, AI is here to stay. It will continue to be developed and as with all new technologies, there will be disruptions. Jobs will be replaced. But the way to secure our place is by making ourselves valuable and using AI as a superpower instead of treating it as a threat. So I humbly ask that you keep an open mind while watching this video. I wouldn't work with a company if I believed their methods were unethical or predatory. Today, I'll show you the incredible capabilities of this AI tool and how you can use it to expedite your workflow, going from ideation to execution faster than ever. I hope this will make it clear that even when AI is involved, the quality of the output still heavily depends on the artist's creativity and art direction. I wanted to make this project a bit different by challenging AI in a unique way, creating a Rubik's Cube filled with entirely different types of models. The challenge I set for myself was to create a Norse mythology inspired Ragnarok Rubik's Cube, where each face would represent a distinct post-apocalyptic world. The concept stemmed from the widespread panic and frustration surrounding AI tools, which often feel like the end of the world for many artists, mirroring the idea of Ragnarok. The cube really embodies all the aspects of Ragnarok, with AI generated assets bringing each face to life. Symbolically, this cube actually being fully AI generated could also represent the end of the world narrative often associated with these tools. This was my creative process behind the artwork, though I obviously encourage everyone to interpret it in their own way. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. With this project, I combine three powerful tools. First, Mesh AI, which I use to generate the 3D models and textures quickly with tools like Texture 3D and AI Texturing. Then there's Blender, which helped me design, assemble and tweak the scenes. Finally, I brought everything into Unreal Engine for adding the cinematic lighting, atmosphere and rendering. This challenge I think would demonstrate the balance between AI and human creativity. Meshi handles the model and texture generation, while I focus on designing, assembling and directing the scene. This combination highlights how AI can enhance your workflows without replacing your unique touch. Meshi AI is packed with tools that make it easy to generate assets. For this project, I leaned heavily on the text to 3D and image to 3D features. These features let you input a simple text prompt or an image and then turn them into detailed 3D models. The process is surprisingly intuitive and there are plenty of options to refine the results. AI texturing allows you to upload a model and texture it in just a few minutes using text prompts. If you're into voxel art, the text to voxel tool can create Minecraft or Lego styled models instantly. Plus, Meshi's community page lets you explore and remix creations from other users so that you can copy their prompts to jumpstart your own work. When generating a model, Meshi gives you four variations to choose from. Pro users get additional features like retrying a generation up to four times for free or optimizing topology with remeshing tools. For textures, you can refine them further using AI editing tools or create stylized outputs with options like the sculpture mode for non-metallic surfaces or PBR for metallic ones. Meshi also has rigging and animation features similar to Mixamo, allowing you to auto-rig characters and apply pre-made animations. While I didn't use this feature for this project, I think they have a great collection of animations if you're working on character-focused content. Now that you've seen what Meshi can do, let's talk about how I used it for the challenge. The first step was figuring out the layout 
of the Rubik's Cube. I used a website called Rubik's Cube Solver to test different color arrangements. The goal was to make it look realistic while ensuring each face could tell its own story. To save time, I made the edge pieces the same color on both sides, even though that's technically impossible in a real one. It's all about selling the illusion while removing the technical hurdles of complex shader setups that could have been required for rendering different scenes on each face of the same cube. Each color of the cube represents a unique theme. Red captures demonic rituals and fiery destruction. Blue reflects the icy devastation of Fimble Winter. Green shows nature reclaiming civilization. White portrays a hive mind AI using humans as resources. Yellow symbolizes religious icons enduring the apocalypse. And finally, orange represents the death of the sun. To get started on the challenge, I created a single square of the cube in Blender. Each square became its own mini scene filled with AI generated assets. I used mostly text prompts to generate models but occasionally supplemented with AI generated images from ChatGPT. Each scene needed its own sense of scale which was a fun challenge to manage. I tried keeping everything close to the actual scale as much as possible. Some generations like the hands coming out of the ground were very difficult. It struggles when you try to generate multiple objects instead of focusing on one and the hands are just as bad as any new artist learning to draw them for the first time. I also made use of some community assets like these three incredible generations of Greek gods by 3D backgrounds. Once the smaller cubes were ready, I stacked them together and applied the color arrangement I designed earlier. I didn't worry too much about the materials and lighting at this stage since everything would be exported to Unreal Engine for the final render anyway. And Unreal Engine was the perfect choice for this project. Its real-time rendering capabilities combined with tools like Nanite made it easy to handle high poly assets. I also want to use the Easy Snow plugin for UE5 to create the snow and other atmospheric effects required in this project. Unreal Engine allowed me to create the polished final product without the much longer render times of Blender's cycles. I blocked out large elements first, landscapes, mountains, and other major details, using Megascan's assets to break up repetition and add realism. I first tried to set up the lighting using the environment light mixer in Unreal Engine, but then settled on a simple HDRI backdrop paired with the skylight. Initially, I tried importing tree assets from Blender's Botanic add-on, but then switched to Megascans for better optimization and quality. I used Unreal's level sequencer to roughly set up the camera angles, matching the cuts to a soundtrack I composed in FL Studio. The music is heavily inspired by Hailan, featuring lyrics from an old Norse poem called Voluspa, if I'm saying that right, which speaks of Ragnarok. Fun fact, the vocals are actually my own voice, and if I did my job correctly, you shouldn't be able to tell. I exported the entire cube from Blender as a USD file and used Unreal Engine's USD stage to check everything. At first, the cube was rotated incorrectly, but I quickly fixed it and could easily make further adjustments in Blender, override the file again, and reload the stage in Unreal. This back and forth workflow allowed me to refine the setup until it felt just right. Once the placeholder cube was replaced with the final version, I refined the lighting inside each cube face and finalized the camera angles. After ensuring everything was polished, it was time to render the entire sequence. Finally, the compositing was done in DaVinci Resolve. Nothing too crazy, just some color correction and minor adjustments to enhance the final look. And now, enjoy the final result. This project was really fun to work on. It highlighted the potential of AI tools like Meshi AI. What would have taken me months to model, texture and assemble in the traditional sense, I managed to pull it off in just a few days. It's a testament to how AI can enhance workflows and speed up your creative process, allowing artists to focus on the bigger picture. I encourage you to try out Meshi AI for yourself and see how it fits into your workflow. And let me know in the comments, what do you think about AI tools being applied in 3D art? Are they a valuable resource? Or do you feel that they still have a long way to go? Either way, try to stay civil and constructive with the discussions as much as you can. And if you're curious to learn more about cutting edge technology like this, don't miss out my recent video on 3D Gaussian splatting. In that video, I demonstrate how I used just my phone to scan myself into a fully interactive 3D model and imported it into Blender. It is an exciting glimpse into the future of 3D creation.